Next up, we have Butterfree. Those too young to remember the original Indigo League anime are fortunate to have never experienced the crushing pain of Ash having to say goodbye to his Butterfree, which as a Caterpie was the first Pokemon he ever caught. Speaking of crushing pain, today we're going to be examining Butterfree's history in the competitive scene. Now this may surprise some of you, but Butterfree isn't the most well-equipped Pokemon for serious battling. And some fans theorize that Pokemon like Butterfree and Beedrill were put in so the player could have an early game full evolved Pokemon that would fall off later in the adventure due to their bad stats. Nevertheless, you asked. And now we must answer, how good was Butterfree actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Alas, poor Butterfree was one of the worst fully evolved Pokemon in the game. Sure, it had Sleep Powder in the first generation, where Sleep was at its strongest, and Sunspore Paralysis for dual status was nice, but it was held back by the fact that Butterfree had absolutely no defensive or offensive prowess whatsoever. Its weakness riddle typing alongside Pathetic Bulk meant it wasn't countering anything at all, and it wasn't hurting anything in return with non-stab Psychic or Mega Drain from a base 80 special. In OU, it was completely and utterly outclassed by Executor and Victory Bell, as their superior typing stats and move pool made them able to actually switch into common Pokemon and threaten the opponent in return. Butterfree couldn't hope to find a niche in Yu Yu, as it was similarly outclassed by Venusaur and Venomoth there, who are Pokemon that already struggled in that tier to begin with at that, and even all the way down in NU, it still couldn't find a niche, as both Pokemon resided down there as well, as did another dual status Pokemon, Drowsy, who had the benefit of stab on its psychic and a higher special stat. There was just nothing Butterfree could do anywhere in Gen 1, except of course its small niche in Ubers, where it functioned as an excellent Mewtwo counter as it shrugged off amnesia boosted psychics, blizzards, and thunderbolts alike. Just kidding of course, unless you believe that, in which case we've got a nugget bridge to sell you. Gen 2 didn't help Butterfree at all. In fact, the abundance of rest and sleep talk managed to make it even worse, as it was now incredibly easy to shrug off the only thing Butterfree could hope to afflict the opponent with, status. Now, technically, it did get a few buffs. Mega Drain was upgraded to Giga Drain. It received Nightmare to annoy sleeping Pokemon, and Hidden Power Bug meant it had an actual stab attack. Yeah, it had the 70 base power stab off of its massive base 45 attack stat. That's what Butterfree needed to become a middle tier NU threat. Once again, that that was a joke. All of these buffs did absolutely nothing to solve the fact that Butterfree was astonishingly useless on both offense and defense. It couldn't scrape even the tiniest niche in NU. Once more, thanks to the presence of Execute, Gloom, Venomoth and its new Sludge Bomb, and Tangela, even not fully evolved Pokemon without sleep moves were better choices than Butterfree in NU. Bayleaf was a testament to that. Once again, Butterfree couldn't hack it whatsoever in Gen 2, outside of Ubers of course, where it rivaled Zapdos and Skarmory as a solid counter to Curse Lugia's mighty Aeroblast. And if you're interested in purchasing a Nugget Bridge, the starting price is 500 Poké Dollars, which is the same reasonable price as a Magikarp. The third generation finally gave Butterfree a legitimate useful buff. Its new ability Compound Eyes increases the accuracy of all of its moves. This meant its Sleep Powder went from 75% accuracy to a whopping 97.5%, making it the second most accurate sleep move in the game behind Spore. Of course, this wasn't nearly enough to vault Butterfree into any sort of notable niche in any tier, because it only really offered sleep, and anything beyond that was just trying to find some sort of justification for using Butterfree, meaning one was just using it because they liked it as a Pokemon. That's fine and all, but if one's foremost goal was to win, they weren't going to be using Butterfree. Even if sleep on its own was worth taking an entire Pokemon slot, and it usually wasn't, even all the way down in NU, players would just use Parasect, which in addition to guaranteed sleep of Spore, also had tangibly useful support and aromatherapy. Most players didn't use Parasect though, they preferred to use good Pokemon that had the lower accuracy of their sleep moves, made up for by the fact that they had better typing and stats. The foremost example was once again, Venomoth, and this time, Blossom joined the fray. Both Pokemon, especially Blossom, were among the best in the tier, and left no room for Butterfree to do anything. Here's how completely, totally, utterly unusable Butterfree was. It was outclassed by Ledeon. Now, Ledeon itself wasn't anywhere close to good, but it was still much more effective at accomplishing something than Butterfree. For that matter, Yanma had far more of a niche than Butterfree did as well. Some players tried to use Choice Band Butterfree, yeah, you heard that right, but it was ridiculously weak, and just never worth using. Well, of course, outside of Ubers, where it took on a role as a prime answer to Swords Dance and Choice Band Groudon, although it faltered against defensive sets. Nugget Bridge is available while supplies last. Team Rocket membership sold separately. 
The fourth generation gave Butterfree some nice tools. The new physical special split and the addition of Bug Buzz meant it could, at long last, use a stab move off of its superior special attack stat. It wouldn't be hitting hard or anything, but at least it could actually do something offensively. Getting U-Turn was also quite nice. Butterfree's attack stat was so low that the stab boost wasn't likely to make much difference in terms of damage, but it was still a great tool to have, as it allowed Butterfree to safely scout and capitalize on the opponent's switch after putting something to sleep. Meaning Butterfree could, in theory, get its team out to an early lead, providing actual offensive momentum. What an idea! Of course, this sounds a little too good to have been true, and that's because it was, as Butterfree received those buffs in the same generation that Stealth Rock was introduced. However, in spite of this massive hindrance for a Pokemon that already struggled to eke out the smallest semblance of a niche in even the lowest tiers, Butterfree somehow managed to finally find that tiniest of roles in Enu. It could use its accurate sleep powder early in the game to shut down Stealth Rock for its teammates. Most notably, Tier King and fellow quadruple rock league Charizard. Some Reggie Rock leads ran Lumberry, but that meant they didn't have leftovers, making them worse at thwarting offensive threats on Butterfree's team, such as Tauros and the aforementioned Charizard. Plus, after it got rocks up, Butterfree could simply sleep powder again, putting something on the opposing team out of commission. And if that Pokemon was Reggie Rock, then Butterfree's rapid spinning teammate, usually Hitmonchan or Sandslash, would have an easy time getting rid of the rocks, meaning Butterfree would have done his job. Plus, with a choice scarf attached, Butterfree would out speed the common Jinx lead, allowing it to get the first sleep off. The speed from Scarf was a useful mind game too. If Butterfree's first sleep victim had woken up or had been KO'd, then Butterfree could use its fast sleep to threaten common offensive Pokemon such as Floatzel, Haunter, and Magmortar. Now, this niche was minimal, as Venomoth still existed in the tier and usually outclassed it, as Venomoth was only regularly weak to Stealth Rock, was far more offensively potent, and could set and absorb Toxic Spikes. However, with the increased amount of offensive power in NU, Butterfree's more accurate sleep could make it occasionally worthwhile, being more reliable at crippling and opposing Pokemon, and thus making the monsters like Metacham on its team more dangerous. Plus, Venomoth didn't use Choice Scarf, meaning Butterfree had another advantage over it. Butterfree wasn't anywhere close to top or even middle tier, but the fact that it had a niche at all was amazing considering the misery it had endured for the past three generations. It was nice for it to finally get something. The 5th generation gave Butterfree some more notable buffs. It received one of the best boosting moves in the game in Quiver Dance, and in conjunction with its new ability Tinted Lens, its bug buzzes were now both boosted and more difficult to resist. Now, it certainly wasn't Volcarona or even Venomoth, but seeing as the latter was banned from RU, Butterfree now had a legitimate niche in the tier. As an actual sleeping threat, it wasn't difficult to fit Rapid Spin support with the excellence of Kabutops and Cryogonal, and Butterfree found plenty of setup opportunity with the ubiquity of a Momola, using Substitute to block Toxic and allowing it to hold back its sleep, making it even more difficult to deal with. It could also opt out for Hidden Power Rock, which would allow Butterfree to lure and absolutely lacerate Moltres. Now, Butterfree was still quite flawed. Its physical frailty meant it crumbled to common priority like Entei's Extreme Speed, and it wasn't strong enough to muscle through defensive teams on its own, even with Pokemon like Steelix not actually resisting Bug Buzz. However, Sleep was incredibly strong in Gen 5, thanks to the reset on Switch mechanics essentially being a KO, and even if Butterfree didn't manage to pull off a sweep, it could still dent the opposing team hard. Before being buried, Butterfree's boosted bug buzzes badly bludgeoned battlers. It wasn't the most top tier Pokemon in RU, but it was still quite viable, and even saw the slightest bit of ladder and tournament success. Sweeping someone with a Butterfree was the ultimate act of dominance, and in Gen 5 RU, it could actually feasibly become reality. Now, we usually don't mention singles players by name, because it is immensely difficult to trace the origin of certain Pokemon or strategies to a single person, but we have to mention Silent Verse, who was one of the best RU players and showcased the power of Butterfree. If you'd like to read more about his exploits, check out his Smog and Rate My Team thread, titled Dancing Free, and linked in the description. Funnily enough, Butterfree was better in RU than in NU, where it wound up again, and for one simple reason. Pulling off Rapid Spin was nearly impossible in NU, making building a Butterfree team more restrictive. The only Rapid Spinner was Wartortle, who was immensely difficult to fit on teams, and whose primary purpose was propping up the most powerful prominent Pokemon in the tier, Charizard. Butterfree was still occasionally worthwhile, given the strength of sleep, especially after Jinx was banned, since it could deny early game Stealth Rock from the likes of Golem and Golurk before they even had a chance to set those rocks up, thus supporting Charizard in that way, and getting a pseudo KO was generally a great way to start off a game. Butterfree also had plenty of setup opportunity against the ever-present Alomomola, and after a boost, could slice through most offensive Pokemon like Samurott, Sock, Superior, and Swellow. It wouldn't break through Pokemon like Regice, but it could 
could leave them dented enough to where a teammate like Ludicolo could have an easier time cleaning up. Butterfree was difficult to fit on a team, but it had a small niche in NU once again, capping off a perfectly decent Generation 5 for it. A couple of buffs can really go a long way. Even these buffs allowed Butterfree to do things like boost up and bust past monsters like Aerodactyl and Ryu. Now, technically, Butterfree was untiered in Gen 5, but that was more of a usage statistic anomaly than any sort of indictment of its viability. Anyone who played Ryu and NU knew that such a placement was too harsh, and it didn't reflect Butterfree's capabilities. The trickle-down effect of Gen 6's immense power creep hit Butterfree incredibly hard, as did the fact that Sleet was no longer essentially a KO with the reverted mechanics. As a result, it couldn't scrap for any sort of niche in NU any longer. There was now a new lowest tier, PU, but Butterfree had a difficult time fitting in even all the way down there. Even though the 6th generation boosted its base special attack stat from 80 to 90, and even with a buff to Fog now making it easier than ever to remove Stealth Rock, its low overall stats meant it just wasn't able to match the rest of the tier. With strong, bulky Pokemon like Rotom Frost, Stoutland, and Muck everywhere, to say nothing of hard counters like Probopass, Regice, Eviolite, Vullaby, it was just too difficult for Butterfree to ever accomplish anything. It was so easy to check because it was so weak that even Feraler Pokemon would be able to take a boosted hit from it, which was all that was needed. Struggling to KO the likes of Floatzel and Zebstrika was immensely disappointing. Players were better off using Jump Pluff, who wasn't exactly strong, but had immense speed and boosted a lot more instantly, and dangerously, thanks to Swords Dance. Butterfree dropped to untiered, and this time there was no doubt that it deserved it. It couldn't do anything at all, even in PU. On paper, Gen 7's Z move seemed to be just what Butterfree needed to eke out a niche in PU. It struggled with power, and the added strength of Z move seemed to be the solution, especially since Tinted Lens bypassing of resistances would ensure that they were hitting as hard as possible. As a bonus, Ultra Sun and Moon made Defog a lot more widespread, making it even easier to keep rocks off the field. However, this was a generation late and a polka dollar short. Z move Butterfree might have been serviceable in Gen 6, but the 7th generation also brought a ton of power creep that shook up the landscape of the PU metagame game and made it nigh impossible for Butterfree to accomplish anything, not least of all because it had competition with more consistent setup sweepers like Calm Mind, Oracorial G, and Quiver Dance Blossom. It also struggled to break through the bulky Pokemon permeating the tier. Even with the added power of Z-Moves coming up short against the likes of Assault Vest, Electros, Regirock, Cryogonal, Ferrocene, and more, it was just not worth using. It was too unreliable and inconsistent, which are the opposite of what you look for in a Pokemon if your goal is to win. As a result, Butterfree chalked up its third consecutive untiered placement, although this was only the second one that was truly deserved. While Butterfree's shimmering wings give it access to a plethora of noteworthy VGC support moves, such as Rage Powder, Tailwind, and Compound Eyes boosted Sleep Powder, it still struggles to function well in doubles due to its pitiful stats and awful typing. The threat of two opponents means that Butterfree can't use Sleep to set itself up with Quiver Dance, and it faces competition as a redirector user from Volcarona, Smeargle, Togekiss, and a slew of other Pokemon, but by far its biggest enemy is Amoongus. Amoongus brings the same combo of Rage Powder and sleep, not needing compound eyes to be reliable, and instead able to utilize an incredible ability in Regenerator that only emphasizes how much more bulk it has. Butterfree's only real advantages are its speed, which is still low, and a flying typing that could sometimes let it pair well with ground types. In all other situations, Amoongus often has it beat. Nevertheless, Butterfree has managed to flutter its way into a few noteworthy placements over the years. Chief among its advocates is Philip Winget, who found numerous ways to use his favorite Pokemon in VGC 2017. The most notable being his top 16 finish at the San Jose Regionals. VGC 2017 was notably scarce in redirectors, with the only four being Butterfree, Parasect, the Clefable line, and Smeargle. Philip knew that while Butterfree couldn't challenge the bulk of Clefable, its typing and access to all of Tailwind, Rage Powder, and Sleep Powder gave it a unique niche. He paired it with an offensive core of Garchomp and Scarf Gyarados that created big problems for opponents. In the early meta, such aggressive offense tore through the double Tapu teams going around, and Butterfree could use Sleep Powder to shut down opposing Trick Room setters and slower mons, even through a possible mental herb, and it freely floated over his own team's earthquakes. For its final move, he picked Bug Buzz for some offensive presence, and Focus Sash was the mandatory item to ensure Butterfree could cheat its poor bulk and have more impact on the field. However, Butterfree was still an awkward meta pick due to the prevalence of Arcanine and Coco, two Pokemon who could outspeed and threaten it heavily, as well as Butterfree's whole general deal of being terrible statistically. Philip was a standout with his Butterfree, which he continued to use throughout the season, and changed its sets as he saw fit, even switching to a Gracium Z Sleep Powder set. But while Philip was able to effectively actualize his devotion to Butterfree to garner an impressive 300 CP with it through the year, to most other players, it still wasn't worth their consideration.
The 8th generation gave Butterfree a Gigantamax form, which changed all of its bug type moves into G-Max Befuddle, which would dish out immense damage and cause either sleep, poison, or paralysis. However, it, like most Gigantamax abusers, were not on par with premier Dynamax abusers like Gyarados, and was thus never seen before Dynamax was banned. Butterfree's Gigantamax form wasn't the only buff the 8th generation bestowed upon it, though. It absolutely adored the addition of Heavy Duty Boots, which allowed it to completely ignore its nemesis, Stealth Rock. Furthermore, it received an incredible new stab boost, Hurricane, which was already fierce with its high base power and great coverage, loved the boost from Quiver Dance, and was made even more dangerous by either one of Butterfree's two great abilities. Compound Eyes helped compensate for its meager accuracy, while Tinted Lens removed its resistances and made it hit even harder. Once PU was developed during the Isle of Armor, Butterfree dropped down once again, but this time it was ready. With its new weapons, it absolutely terrorized the tier, setting up Quiver Dances with ease thanks to Sleep Powder and ripping through nearly everything with its power. Powerful stats. It didn't last too long as it was voted on initially and only received one ban vote. But as it was explored further, the extent of its ridiculous power became clearer, and shortly after the initial vote, another was held where it was unanimously decided to be overwhelming for the tier, receiving the ban hammer and being sent to PUBL. It wasn't quite good enough for NU seeing as Ninjas was completely dominating the tier and there was just about no reason to use a different bug flying type. But in the grand scheme of things, this was very much a win. Butterfree of all things had just gotten banned from a tier for being too powerful. What a beautiful sight to see. At the time of this video, the lower tiers are experiencing an immense shakeup with not just Crown Tundra's additions, but also a huge tier shift. Butterfree hasn't been retested in PU yet, although it's likely it will be revisited when the tier settles down. It's currently impossible to speculate accurately how it will perform in the expanded metagame, but the days of it struggling for some sort of viability are over, thanks to these new buffs. Overall, the 8th generation has been the best for Butterfree by far in singles. VGC brought Butterfree new tools and placed it in an environment where it could thrive. As mentioned before, the most obvious apparent change was that it got a G-Max form which does the things that we mentioned in the single section. However, such a variation of status effects is notoriously unreliable, not to mention that running an offensive Butterfree was a recipe for a disaster in the first place. G-Max Butterfree isn't completely useless, but it's not the true revolution in 2020. It's Butterfree's role compression that makes it valuable. While Butterfree was still bringing the same support tools to the table, like Pollen Puff, Sleep Powder and Rage Powder, they drastically increase in value due to their interaction with Dynamax. Sleeping your opponent's Dynamax target was a potentially game-winning play, especially when Butterfree could continue to draw attention afterwards with Rage Powder or choose to top off its own Dynamax partner with Pollen Puff. The biggest change to Butterfree's viability then was the environment around it. Once again, Amoongus was gone, as were most other redirectors and reliable sleep users, and all of a sudden Butterfree's unique mix of support options were quite appealing. Many players tried to make Butterfree work, but fitting something with such obvious downsides into your team was a big ass. Several put up good results at regionals, but only two players managed to take it to new heights. Andrew Burley, who placed third at the first regionals of the format in Dallas, and Tobias Kozyski, who was able to win the Malmo regionals, one of the last in-person events before the season was shut down. Both Butterfreeze had the same set, Pollen Puff, Rage Powder, Sleep Powder, and Protect, and both were used with significant speed control. Andrew brought both Trick Room and Tailwind via Bronzong and Whimsicott to support his offensive threats of Charizard, Duraludon, and Rhyperior, while Tobias went hard trick room, bringing a squad of Dusclops, Hatterene, Indeedee, Torkoal, and his own Rhyperior. A viable strategy considering how entirely mediocre Butterfree's speed is. Unfortunately for Butterfree, the end of in-person events also meant the end of its short-lived lifespan, and not just because it fares better outdoors. Series 3 introduced Venusaur back into the fold, a sleep powder user with less reliable accuracy, but far more reliability in every other category, including damage potential and speed, under the ever-popular sun. If that wasn't enough to send Butterfree back to the cocoon forever, the Isle of Armor expansion welcomed back Amoongus and Volcarona, making Butterfree thoroughly obsolete for all but most enthusiastic Lepidopterists. But make no mistake, Butterfree has a combo of support options that are thoroughly unique with Tailwind and speed that Amoongus doesn't possess, instant sleep that Togekiss can't bring, and the chance for some offensive presence that Smeargle or Clefairy can't muster. But at the end of the day, it's simply not worth those stats and typing for most players, and so Butterfree has to be content with the mark that it's made, which all things considered isn't so bad.
And that's it. So how good was Butterfree actually? Well, it's impossible to deny that it is one of the worst Pokemon in competitive history, as it is completely unusable in even the lowest tier in five of the eight generations. However, in the generations where it receives some sort of buff, so generations four, five, and eight, it has been able to eke out a niche. In generation five, it wasn't even restricted to the lowest tier. It was better than RU than it was in NU. Technically, it received more special attack in gen six, so we'll settle on this conclusion. Whenever Butterfree is given a useful new move, it manages to be useful. I mean, it got Hurricane and then it got banned from PU. It's also seen some VGC success. First in Sun and Moon, thanks to the excellent doubles oriented support move pool and Amoongus not being around. And then again in Gen 8, thanks to its unique roll compression and also because Amoongus wasn't around. You know what to do, Game Freak. If you're going to buff Gen 1 Pokemon, give it to the Pokemon that needed the most, like Butterfree. Also, you gave early game evolution Pokemon Pidgeot and Beedrill a Mega Form, so I think Butterfree needs one too. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Butterfree? How would you buff it in singles or in doubles? How would you make it broken? Would you want to make it broken? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.